Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, in allowing me to share with you my uh, research passion and also give me an opportunity to uh, a kind of show off my personal collection of old magazines and old pictorials uh, in my office upstairs. Even in the past 20 years, I have been uh, visiting the flea market of Singapore uh, every weekend. Okay? And uh, I built up a humble collection of magazines, movie posters, photographs, and pictorials. Okay? And my presentation, uh, my, this 30 slides, is based on my collection, okay? and my humble collection. So I uh, changed my topic a little bit, the history of reading of Chai Singaporean popular magazine during the 1950s and 60s. The main themes, okay? Uh, the um, magazine of the World War II, pictorials, movie magazines, and prop fiction between publishing and frame making, uh, in uh, discuss the genres and universal publisher, the power of print, constructing emerging communities, and cultural co war. I don't think I have time, enough time to complete the whole presentation the slides of 30 slides. Anyway, I try my best to finish within uh, 10 minutes. Okay, let's start with this uh, photograph. Okay, it's taken in, it's a cap in the National Archives of Singapore, taken in 1962. Okay, I have spent a lot of time to study intensively this photograph. It's a Chinese, uh, so called the rento bookstore on the street. Okay. Uh, if these two, these two men, they pay 10 cents or 5 cents, you can sit down to read this kind of so-called popular readings on the street. Okay, I study one, one by one, I mean the, the, the cover image of each issue. For example, for this one, this should be the happiness pictorial, and the cover is the, should be the movie star Han Qing Wo. Okay, and then the second one is the back and the front, is the Lan Yang, the South Tensi, and um, and then this one, they are the martial art novels. And then for this one, it should be the Southern Screen, Nan Go Dianying, the official magazine of the Shaw Brothers. And for this one, it's the Wu Xia Shitie, the world of the martial art. And this one should be the Guo Qi Dianying, the international screen, Xu Shi Ye Feng, or the Wu Xia. And it's uh, Yu Le Hua Bao, okay? It's Feng Bao Bao and Lin Dai. And it's uh, this one, it's the, the woman and the family. And these are the uh, the comics, okay? From this one is the basic material I build up my uh, argument, okay? And uh, today I talk about the history of reading of Chinese Singaporean, the popular magazine of the 1950s and 60s. My question is, what kind of, what kind of reading were, were available for, the, for a Chinese if they want to, uh, to read something, okay? I work on, I work on the newsstand and the random bookstore. The first one is the, the, uh, the, the, the Pictorial, the Hua Bao, for example, the first one, Nanyang Hua Bao, and then the movie magazines, and then the popular fiction magazines. Okay, the story behind these magazines covers, okay, the story of these pictorial magazines, the history and geography. Story about the cover image, movie stars, and the graphics design. Okay, it's the main theme, a tale of three cities, the cultural interaction between Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And then the two, a cultural institution, the universal publisher, and the Shaw Brothers. And uh, the, uh, the issue and context I will touch on Cold War and cultural politics, nationalism and identity, nation building and printing, and diaspora Chinese and national, uh, I mean regional network. I don't think I can finish it in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, the foundation, I mean the third foundation is from, I know most of you uh, uh, know very well about this book by the uh, Brother Edison, the power of the printed media. How this newspaper and novel, they construct a kind of a emerging community and give up to the rise of nationalism, okay? The presentation mainly based on his theory. Okay, Victorious. Uh, Liang Yong, the, uh, the young companion, which is uh, Grace Zhang, Ge Lan, and uh, Zhang Xuefang, and Xin Fu, uh, Ye Feng, uh, Li Zhangjun, this uh, happiness, and then, uh, It's a girlfriend of Jin Yong. Ding Hua, remember? Xia Meng. Yes, Xia Meng. Yeah, 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 Xia Meng. Okay, drop your phone again. Huh? And get movie magazines. You have the Lai Guo Dian Yin Dai. And then the Guo Qi Dian Yin, International Screen. And the Great, the Great World, a Victorian, the Left Wing. And then the Dian Yin Quan, by the Shaw Brothers, Guang Yi, uh, Yu Le, uh, Le Di, and then also Yin Dai. Okay, now come to the popular fiction magazines. The accents of the uh, fiction, 
uh, uh, red, rock, red, yellow, blue. Okay, the king of the martial art and the world of martial art. It's kind of, it's kind of a detective magazine called the Blue Book. And then a scientific magazine. I mean, a scientific detective. Okay, now come with these two are uh, the most popular um, pictorials in the Singapore in the 1960s. Uh, the Happiness Pictorial and the Young Companions. Okay, I studied the uh, so-called the sales of the uh, of these two magazines, the geographical distribution. You can see around the Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Bangladesh, everywhere except where, except China. It's because of the Cold War. Okay, this kind of magazine, 1950s, 60s, were not allowed to enter China at that time. You can see they're blocked from entering China. Only popular outside China. Okay, now we come to this. I like this one. In fact, it's a very important. Uh, uh, pictorial. I'm asking my student to study it intensively in this uh, in this semester. Okay, it, even the cover itself deserves a research paper. Okay, take pay attention to the year 1961. Okay, Nanyang, Sea. In 1957, Malaysia's independence, and in 1959, Singapore attained this governance in uh, self governance, and this is the this uh, this, magazine, uh, this pictorial published in 1961. Okay, you can see the background. Okay, before the, the pictorial was from, from Hong Kong, they are all Hong Kong movie stars. Now come to a Singapore model. Okay, she's dressed up and then and then this image is superimposed on this so called this kind of Supreme Court. Okay, so we call this the rise of the rise of new local identity. Okay, she's uh, full of confidence, dress up. Okay, and wave her, her hands. Or have a family able to wave to, to, to greet his, her boyfriend. But to me, I read this is a waving to, to to welcome a new historic era. Okay, it's the independence of Singapore. Okay, I call it this this uh the Singapore modernity. And the same issue that the coverage of the HDB, okay, it's the beginning of the HDB project at that time. Okay, it's a kind of new identity emerged. Okay, and other same thing you can see the background is the Paliba Air, Airport. And it's the uh, I say, called a, a modern woman professional is an air holders. And also, uh, uh, let's suppose with the other what he did, it's a movie called uh, Air Holders, Kung Zhong Xiao Jie. Okay, in fact, uh, Professor Fu Peng Shek, he did not university, he, put, he just published a new article, studied the so called the meaning of this implication of this air holders with the cultural Cold War. Okay, just published in uh, 19. Uh, I mean, I feel and the, new, the newest issue is called the more than just entertaining cinematic containment and Asia's Cold War in Hong Kong. Okay, study intensively the meaning of this Kong Zhong Xiao Jie. Okay, again for this Ya Zhou Hao Bao, uh, the Asia is also popular in Singapore, supported by Asia Foundation. So we will know that Asia Foundation is funded by America, if not CIA. You can see the count. <laughs> Uh, the, yes, I'm serious. Okay, I have two of my students already published. I mean, uh, write written a uh, 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 master thesis devoted to this Asia Foundation and also this Asia Pictorial. Basically, they have a political mission is anti-communist. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many do I have? Five minutes? Huh? More than five minutes? Or? Okay. No, about four minutes. Left four, okay. Time. Okay. Now I shift to this quicker. Okay. Uh, it's a blue cover with magazines. Man Pi Su is published by Universal Publisher from Shanghai to Hong Kong. Okay, maybe a quicker. Okay, and as for the same publisher, is the uh, Wuxia Shi Jie, the World of Martial Art. And you can see the main market. One of the main markets was Singapore and Malaysia. You can see this martial art model. The background is, is the Kuala Lumpur. And and this the boss, the founder of this university publisher, Mr. Lobby, was very clever. Okay, he's a cultural entrepreneur. Okay, besides uh, funding this so-called uh, publishing industry called uh, publishing uh, martial art novel, movie magazines, blah blah blah, he developed at, uh, the, another way of film producing. Okay, and established so-called Hong Kong film company to produce this called martial art movie. Adapted from all these novel published in the in the magazine, they have these two ways. This kind of uh, they reinforce each other, they, they mutual promotion each other, the framing and the publishing industry. Okay, this is a dean's office. No kidding, it's not a it's not a mistake, because I'm talking about the Shaw Foundation building. These are the Shaw Brothers. Okay, uh, the the Shaw Brothers established their 
that uh, I mean the enterprise in Singapore and Malaysia are uh, Malaysia at that time, like since 1920s. Okay, and of course everybody, everybody knows they have this kind of producing Mandarin Mandarin movies, very very famous. Uh, today I talk about the, the power of print related to the Shaw Brothers. The Shaw Brothers published a lot of different types of movie magazines in like since the 1930s. Okay, and producing star images and display on the newsstand of the street corners and to compete with their competitor, the cafe, MP and GI. Okay, this is a kind of a positioning to me. It's a kind of strategy in competing with the and uh, their the competitor, competitor and develop a readership and reading community. Okay, Ye Feng, Zhang Pei Pei, Ah Li Li Hua, Ah Ye Ah Li Qing. Of course, this is Lin Dai. Okay. I tell you what, this software models, the software magazines uh, in Opera issue, the first issue, take me at least 200 Singapore dollars at that <laughs> 10 years ago. Now more than this, okay? This is the first issue of Langodin at the flea market. Okay, now besides the, I mean the Langodin, since 1930s, uh, Singapore, they published the Swing Wives, I mean it's a short block, it's Okay, uh, and then uh, we have this, Movie News and Free Malayu is the Malay movie magazine. And uh, okay, I talk about the readership at this network. And uh, at the uh, right hand side, uh, the left hand side is the is the advertisement. So uh, they tell you that the software screen they publish, they sell more than hundred thousand copies of each issue, and it's very effective to have advertisement. Okay, and also for the right hand side is the uh, is a kind of the, the one the, they have this kind of a uh, game. Uh, organized by these uh, magazines, so this participant they, they get uh, they get the award. Okay, this, uh, they, they have these all their perfect pictures, and then they study where are they from. It means that I try to reconstruct the readership, geographical readership of the of the uh, the substance screen. I draw this map. Okay, again, it's like it's I read Southeast Asia, mainly of Southeast Asia, and also uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong, of course, outside China. Okay, again, I use this concept of uh, emerging community to cons means the power of print. How this movie magazine construct a kind of an emerging community of movie fans, okay? And also, how did um, this they construct, I mean the pictorial, they construct an emerging community of the overseas Chinese, okay? I think that's it I want to share, okay? Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on time. Uh, we do have time for a couple of questions. So, for the one who read this picture, you read this. Uh, I remember some of them. Some of them. How much did it cost altogether? altogether. Wow! <laughs> After I retire, I sell my thing. I don't need to worry about my CPF. <laughs> it's offset. It's really, uh, some of them really expensive. For example, the in Opera, Issue of the, the Asia, the Asia of Victoria, Yajou Baba, and Hong Kong. 1,500. Just one issue. The first issue. So this me, uh, but it deserved it because my, at that time my student was writing her master thesis on the Asia of Victoria. I think we leaked that issue. Okay, you see, you see the, the opening statement about the editorial board. In fact, it's quite, uh, everybody knows. The Asia Victoria and the Asia Framing Framing Company, funded by CIA. Okay, it's quite clear. Okay, it's beyond doubt now. So it's deserved. But at that time, uh, Hong Kong and uh, uh, and Hong Kong and Singapore were the front line of the Cultural Cold War in 1950s and 60s. So this is what I'm researching on. Yeah. Uh, have you seen any trace of the Communist Party play uh, their role in terms of? Of course, this is why we call it context here. In sync, I mean, in, in, in for coming is the, the Great Wall Victoria, okay? It's the Chang Chang Den, okay? okay? But the but the pick, I mean, it's all the move Victoria. It's published in Hong Kong, but not directly from mainland China, okay? In fact, this Great Wall Victoria, uh, Victoria was very popular. We have also a quite uh, decent connection of Great Wall Victoria in our Chinese library. My my student just give me a submit to me uh, an, a research paper. <laughs> studying the Great World, a uh, Great World, a uh, Great World, uh, Victoria. Studying how they, how the Southeast Asia was represented in this Great World, Victoria. It's really good. 
how they construct emerging community uh, through this, uh, how the Southeast Asia represented. Just add one more point. Uh, maybe oh, I'm not sure, and Big Hua may be interested. For this discussion of the air holders, they include Taiwan as Southeast Asia. So I my question also ask why Taiwan at the time included as Southeast Asia? I think it's because of the Cold War. It is kind of a united front to anti communist Even Thai. Now that nobody considers Taiwan as part of Southeast Asia, right? But for the movie magazine, I asked the question how Southeast Asia was rep represented, but they included Taiwan in this kind of coverage of these uh, so called air holders. It's very interesting. Yeah. For the Asia Foundation, are there similar in initiatives today, conti continuing today into the online world? You mean? Asia Foundation? Are there similar initi initiatives continuing today, perhaps into the online world? Very soon. Shortly. Not yet. But very soon. This is why I say, I mean, it's the con nice condition of the new Cold War. So I can foresee more money will coming in in this so called uh, Battle Republic book. Very soon. Not now, but very soon, I can tell. How yeah. many of these were printed and published in Singapore? For the Lanyanghua Bao, yes. For this Lanyanghua Bao, it's very important. It's the Lian Chubansha. Yeah, Lian Chubansha, mainly from Hong Kong. Mainly from Hong Kong. But in the 1961, since I think the most interesting part I'm interested in is from 1955 to 1965. It's really interesting. It's the building up of a new identity through publishing, through this kind of Lanyanghua Bao. Right? And they build up a new identity, and also the frame. For some of the Lion City, Sichuan, is a kind of new Malayan Chinese movie. Okay, it's a kind of a new cultural move in uh, between 1955 and 1965. To me, it's the most exciting period in the cultural history of Singapore. Okay. How did Asia Foundation actually give the money to which which groups? How did, how is the money distributed? They won't tell you this kind of thing. Uh, I mean, the, the, which one is supported? All history, through all history. All history. Yeah, through all history. Yeah. Okay. And also, even uh, one of my students, a PhD student, they, she went to New York, really go to the Asia Foundation. They cannot find the, they, cannot, they will show me the archive. Yeah, maybe we can show some of the archive, maybe at the uh, Hoover, Hoover Institute in, the, in, the, in Stanford. They may have some. Yeah? They have, I think the Asia Foundation, they have moved their, their, most of their archive to the, to the Hoover Institute. Yeah. I think I saw one more question back here, and then we'll break for lunch. Yeah. Uh, um, what is a big loss of my, your very beautiful pictures over there? Um, I, as I'm aware that all of these uh, magazines, uh, 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 the main customers of them are the overseas Chinese, right? And they live in very different country, different kind of nationalism. So what do you think, what kind of a society that actually all of these Chinese, uh, the overseas Chinese imagine, if you go back to where that is, an imagine of their society? You mean what kind of society or economy? Uh, no, what the kind of society. Uh, that they imagine that all of the all oh, of the okay. Chinese that from all of our countries okay. different different yeah, states. I know what I mean. Yep. 1950 before I mean uh, after World War Two is a whole process of this of independence. Okay, I think it's a changing of different types of. So why I use the word emerging communities. Okay, it's a different type of different progress, different speed of so called attaining the independence. Okay. I I not studied this uh, yet, um, but in Singapore I can tell you this, uh, 19, since 1955, I can see this kind of uh, this kind of new new ideas emerged, and uh, also because of the new film industry and the broadcasting industry. Okay, it's this kind of uh, new things come out, and uh, this is why I said 1955 and 1965 was the most challenging and stimulating, inspiring period. I did study. Uh, this, uh, I, I answer the questions. Uh, this is various, okay? Uh, but in Singapore, I think like uh, after World War II, still not yet. But after 1955, I can see the difference, okay? Especially after 1959, I attained the self-governance, 
其實多唔少性格嘛。For example, this new Nanyang Harbor, the Nanyang Southern Sea Pictorial, you can see that the cover are very different from those from Hong Kong. Okay, it's kind of the rise of new so-called the local identity. They want to 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 construct it. And another newspaper is called the it's called the Morning Screen or what? Ah, uh, it was uh, established in 1961. In the in the opening speech, they say. I let people say like nowadays you can see all the newsstands, all these magazines are from Hong Kong. We need to change this situation. This is why we publish our magazines. You can see this have new identity come up. It's 1959 or 1960s. This is very clear to me. They kind of uh, they treat Hong Kong as the others. They were detached and incorporate from the Hong Kong connection. Okay? Can I answer your question? Okay, thank you. Oh, okay, I I'm I'm sorry, I, th I think we should uh, co continue our conversations over lunch.